taking you now to a News Nation exclusive. You know we have kept a highlight on the southern border for years at this point, where all cam our cameras were rolling when human smugglers let a family through a hole that they cut in the border wall. So you see the family actually make their way through. Uh, the leader of the smuggling group then actually motioned to our News Nation crew to come over. He apparently wanted to have some type of conversation. And uh, Allie Bradley is certainly on top of all of this. She joined us live this morning for more on the story and uh, what they had to say, Allie. <laughs> Yeah, hey, Adrian. good morning. Right now we're out here in Lukeville. There's about 600 people right now. A lot of them are huddled around fires that they've made out here. And that's a, a scene that we've been seeing play out down here as they're waiting. Some of these folks are waiting two to three days because of family units are prioritized. And as you just saw, family groups continue to pour across the border. And the cartels have really figured out that it's a really efficient way to get people across is by cutting holes in the wall. And they're also tying up border patrol when they're doing that. So here in Lukeville, we watched as one of three criminal cartel SUVs actually rolled up. And a lot of times they're blacked out at night. They don't even have their lights on, but it's all orchestrated. They are controlling all of this. You watch eight people pour out of that car. They're escorted to the wall by smugglers. And then you see them cross through a hole. That hole was cut by them. The migrants then tell me they're from Peru. So you can see the older gentleman. He only has one leg. He needed some help getting through the, the breach point there. When they're done, that smuggler motioned for me to come over. So I went over there and I was standing there talking with him. And he was telling me that he didn't want me to record him. Uh, so he started recording me. And then he also said that he was not cartel and he was not a coyote, even though we literally just saw him push people through a hole in the wall. And he went on to say that he wouldn't show me his face, he wouldn't tell me his name, uh, but he just wanted to continue to record me because of, of who I was and what I looked like, calling me beautiful. So it was a little bit ominous and a little bit uh, eerie to have that conversation with him. He even when he was in the breach point in that hole, he even flexed at one point. Um, they were kind of taunting us all throughout all of this. And he pulled out recording me. Um, and, you know, at this, at this point, two hours later, we saw the same group roll back up. And this time they were cutting a new hole in the wall. It wasn't even a football field away from the hole that was already open. Uh, they used an electric saw and drills, and they even brought out a generator at one point. So the plan was to cut the base of that bollard and then hitch it to a vehicle and pull it off of it, the wall altogether. There's actually bollards that are on the Mexico side that they've already done this to. And while they were out there, they're standing out there taunting us. They were blowing kisses at me. They were laughing. They just continued cutting through that wall. This is pretty much a big game to them at this point, a very lucrative game at that. But we did call Border Patrol. Border Patrol was able to respond out there. And within moments, they had stopped. But moments later, they were doing it at another place. Now, I do want to mention to you here, Marky, that I just talked to two little girls from Ecuador who are out here by themselves. Their mom is apparently out here, a 10-year-old girl and a 7-year-old. And they were crying, and they were visibly scared. And I was doing my best to talk with them. I gave them some was trying to uh, calm them down a little bit, but they just wanted their mom. And honestly, I asked Border Patrol, how are we going to link them back up with their mom? They said they're going to do their best, and they just, sometimes it doesn't happen like that, Marky. Yeah, and, uh, you know, you hope that the mom really is there somewhere in that proximity. Mm -hmm. And you've seen so much so close up in person. In that moment, when you were talking to that cartel smuggler on the other side of the... Were you nervous? Are there Border Patrol agents nearby? I mean, I'm just thinking about your security as well. You know, you know I've seen a lot down here, as you yeah. said, and that was probably the closest um, violation of safety that I felt down here. There was no Border Patrol around. I, it was me and an independent journalist down there. And honestly, I go by my gut all the time. And that one uh, shook me a little bit. I did not want to uh, approach him. I asked him, do you have a gun? Are you going to hurt me? And he said no, and he just kept summoning me over, and I just kind of took the chance. And it, it did not feel safe whatsoever. And I'm going to tell you this. These 600 people, they have not been vetted. They have not been searched. They don't they right. could have weapons on them. We don't know anything about them. They have not been received by Border Patrol yet. And they could at any given moment, and honestly, no one's going to go after them.
Yeah, well, it's frightening, uh, you know, what you've witnessed, what he was telling you yesterday, and you just think about everybody who's out there uh, living in proximity to this day in and day out. Allie Bradley, thank you so much for your reporting. Please be safe uh, in, you know, now in the early morning light there. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.